Hey Blazor friends, I'm Daniel Roth from the Blazor team. In this video, we're going to look at how you can handle UI events from your Blazor components. Web UI elements can trigger all sorts of events in response to user interactions, and you can handle those events from your c -sharp code. Let's check it out. All right, so here in our Blazor web app project, we've already seen how you can handle a click event on a, a button. In our counter component, we've got this button, and we can see that over here, we're uh, wiring up an event handler for the on click event with our increment count method, which is defined below in, below in the code block. Now, there's actually a, a few different ways that you can define an event handler. Uh, for an event. Here we're just uh, specifying the, the method name and defining the method, and it's a synchronous method that takes no arguments. But we could instead do an asynchronous method. So for example, let's do uh, async task increment count async, just to have a different name. Uh, same logic, current count plus plus. We'll save that. Format it a little bit. Okay, and then if we change the method up here to increment count async, uh, we save that. That should then apply to our running application. Just saw the check mark. And if we click the button, it still works just as before. To show that it's actually doing something async, let's add a await of task.delay right here. So this will be a uh, sluggish, <laughs> a sluggish counter. All right, every time we click now, watch, I'm going to click. 1, 1,000, and then it increments. Or click, 1, 1,000, then it increments. So we're, we can have an asynchronous event handler as well as synchronous ones. Um, we also can just, instead of def, uh, specifying a method name, we can just put a, a lambda expression right here in the attribute value. Like we might say, you know, let's just, whenever this on click event happens, let's take the current count, let's get some IntelliSense going, and we'll just increment it right there in line. No problem. Let's see, did that. Uh, uh, I click that. Yep, that's still working. That's just, just to show that it's doing something different. Let's increment by two. We'll save that. Hot reload it, and we're able to go. Let's actually get this side by side so we can see both, both changes when we're playing with things. All right, cool. Um, so you can do lambda expressions. That, that works as well. Now, it, we, that means we could get rid of these existing event handler methods. Now, if you were starting from scratch, like let's say you were just typing out like add on click, and you can type the method name that you want to, to use right here, like increment count. And then you'll notice there's this little light bulb that popped up over here, or you can trigger it by hitting uh, control dot, and that will show you this code action to generate either a synchronous or asynchronous event handler for that, that event. And it knows what type of event it is. Let's do the, the synchronous one. And this looks pretty similar to what we had before, but now it has uh, an event argument, it has this mouse event args argument. Um, that Let's take a look at what that's got. So it's got a few additional properties about the event that was, was just fired. So as we've seen, like that, uh, that argument is obviously optional. You don't need to have it, but you can include it. Uh, and there are various um, event arg types for the different kinds of events. So we could add our code back here, you know, current count plus plus, and then we should be back and running now with an event handler method. And I think I might need to Get uh, done it. Watch the restart. Okay, there we go. There we go in. Yes, we're going. Okay. So those are the different patterns for how you can uh, define uh, event handlers, synchronous or asynchronous, with an event arg or without, um, and you can use the code action to to generate them. All right. Let's try some different events. What about like on change for an an input? So let's add an input uh, uh, UI element right here. And I want to take the value of this input and save it in a variable. So let's, let's add a, a string. That's just going to be text. We'll default it to empty string. And what I want to have happen is every single time this input changes, so at on change equals, and I'm going to create an on change event handler method. Let's use the code action. We'll generate an on change method, which is now below. And then we should be able to take the text variable that I defined above 
And we want to get now the value of that, that input, and we can use the event arg to do that. So if we go and look at the event arg, there is a value property that we can use to get its current value. Now, the, the, the type of that value property is like just an, an object. I want it as a string. I know it's going to be a string because this is a text input, so I'm just going to go ahead and cast it uh, to a string and let Visual Studio know that it's not going to be null. Okay, So we can do that. And so now, uh, to show that that's working, let's render the value of the, the text variable below and save that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, Our formatting doesn't look great. Uh, let me just fix that real quick. Let's put a little, little div around our input. There we go. And we'll format and then maybe add a little padding up here up top using bootstrap. So uh, margin top three. So that's space down a little bit. Okay, that looks better. So now if I type in this um, input, you know, ABC, nothing happens yet. But if I uh, tab away, you know, change the focus, that on change event fires, which then calls my event handler and which gets the value of the input, sets it to the variable, and the component renders, and we see the, uh, the, the, the value of the input rend rendered below. So notice that Blazor will automatically re-render the component uh, after our UI event has been handled. That's just something it, it, it does as sort of a, a, a heuristic. It assumes if you're, you're, if you're wired up to an event handler, something's probably changed and the component needs to, to re-render. OK, that's cool. Uh, what if we want the, this to actually update, though, like every single time I type? Well, we can do that as well. Let's go back to our input. And instead of doing on change, let's do on input, which will fire every single time we type. We probably want to rename this method. I can do that by hitting F2. And that gives, brings up the rename refactoring. So on input. And that should rename it below. And it does. All right, save that. And now as I, as I type, you can see that the, uh, the, the, the text value is being updated with every, uh, with every keystroke. All right, cool. So that's on change and on input. Um, let's do uh, one more. Let's do um, let's do a div here below. Let's do another div. And inside this div, I want to render some text. So let's uh, define another string variable, um, div text, I guess. And by default, this is going to be mouse out. And you'll see why in just a second. It gives you a little hint to what events we're going to handle. And I'm going to render that text inside the div. Uh, div text, just like that. And let's give the div some color just so that we can see it. So I'm going to put a little inline style right here just because I'm lazy. Background color, oh, ND, background color. Let's make it, I don't know, light blue. Uh, good. And then let's add a couple events here. Let's do at on mouse over. Okay. And we'll create an event handler for that. Mouse over. Uh, control dot to generate the event handler. Cool. There's mouse over. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the div text to be mouse over so that we know the mouse is actually over. And, you know, it's getting a little, a little verbose to have all these short little methods. You can see that there's a little a code action here that's saying, hey, do you just want to use an expression body for this method? Ah, yeah, that's, that's much nicer. Okay, so let's, let's do that for, for all of these and make them a little tighter. It's a nice C sharp feature. Change these all to expression bodied functions so we don't have all, don't need all those curly braces for these single expression methods. Okay, so that's mouse, the mouse over method. We want to do one more. Let's do at on, so we get a multiple event handlers on this div. Uh, mouse out. Okay, and let's do mouse out for that one. Again, use our little code action, mouse out. And there it is. Okay, so for here, we'll set the div text to be mouse out, like we had set it as the default. Okay, Change this to be an expression bodied method, and we should be good to go. Okay, So let's refresh the page. Oh, my, my color, did I mess up my color? Light T, light blue. Okay, So now we've got this div that's got a light blue background. And when I mouse over it, the text changes this to mouse over. When I mouse out, the text changes to mouse out. And my input is still working. and yeah. So that's how you can handle uh, events from web UI elements. OK, that's great. Uh, but what about from a component? What if I have a custom component that I also want to have uh, an event that I can then handle from the component that's using it? Can I do that as well? And the answer is yes, of course, you can do that too. 
Uh, to show that, let's actually add another component to our application. We're going to add it to this components folder. I'm just going to click this new file icon and let's create a new razor component. And we're going to call this my button. It's going to be a custom button component. And it's just going to have a button inside of it like this. Um, there we go. Button. And inside the, the button, I don't know, let's just say click me for now. We'll be like that. Okay, And what we want to have happen is that every time this HTML button gets clicked, we want to raise an event so whoever's using my button knows that the button was, was, was clicked. How do we do that? Well, the way you do that is with, by defining a parameter for your component. And that parameter should be of type event callback. And actually, event callback of, of t probably because we're going to want to pass along the uh, mouse, uh, mouse event args. For that uh, that event, okay. So event callback. Let's finish this. Let's call this on click. Will be the name of our event, and it's just a property that's getting a getter has a getter and setter, just like any other uh, component parameter. But because it's of type event callback, we can use all of the Blazor uh, patterns for passing an event callback to my button, like a synchronous method, an asynchronous method, one that takes the the argument, or one that uh, that doesn't. Okay. So that's how you can have your own event for a uh, component. Now, we, we need to actually you know, fire this event, like raise it whenever the button gets clicked. So let's, let's take care of that. So we, uh, we should go onto our button and add at on click. And this will be on, I don't know, let's call it something else, on button click. We already got something called on click. And then we'll use our code action. All right, generate event handler on button click. This one I think I actually want to be asynchronous. I'll show you why in just a, a second. There we go. It's got a little white space. OK, so then in my on button click method, I want to fire that on click event that you know, whoever's using this my button uh, has, has registered for. So I take that on click event callback, and it has an invoke async method on it that I can just call. And it has a couple of overloads, one that doesn't take any parameters, and one that takes that mouse event args parameter. So I'm just going to pass the mouse event args. Along, I mean, we would. This is an async method, so we can just return the, the task. Okay, so that's how we could do that. But if we hover over the on click attribute, we can see that it actually takes an event callback of mouse event args. Like that's the actual type of that attribute. So instead of having that that extra layer, we can actually just get rid of this and instead just take our event callback mouse event args and just pass it in, just like that. And so that should then uh, call the uh, when we, when when on click fires, it will then call on click, which will then fire our, our event callback, and that will uh, call whoever registered an event handler with this component. All right, let's see if that actually works. So let's go back to our counter, and here let's go ahead and add another button up above. But this is going to be my button, like that. And we want to register the on click event that we just defined, and we'll just wire it up to the same increment count method that we're using for the other button. Okay, so save that, and let's go look at our app in the counter page, and see what we got. Oh, this looks like uh, Donut Watch needs to restart. So let's tell it to go ahead and always restart if that happens. Okay, all right, great. So now we've got two buttons. We have the original button, which works, and then we have our our button, our new button, which works as well. We're able to handle the, uh, the button click event for, for our, our, our my button component. Now, there's obviously a couple things that we, we'd like to fix up with our my button component. Like, how, like right now, it always says click me in the text. How do we make it so that we can actually, actually pass some content to my button so that it renders it inside of the HTML button? Well, there's a way to do that. In my button, we can define another parameter. So another component parameter like this. And this one is going to be of type render fragment. So this is a special type. There it is, render fragment. And we're also going to give this uh, parameter a special name. It's going to be called child content. And that's important because that's the, that's the name that signals to Blazor that this is going to be the uh, capture the content of the my button component, you know, the stuff in between the beginning tag and the, the end tag. And what a render fragment is, it's like, it's like capturing the chunk of Razor stuff 
that you put between the beginning and end tag of, of my button and allows you to then render it someplace, someplace else. So I want to render this render fragment right here in our HTML button. So I'm just going to use at syntax and then render the child content right in the HTML button. Now we've seen something similar to this before. Like remember when we were looking at layouts, we were looking at main layout and it had this body property. If we look at the type of the body property, it's also a render fragment. So the, the, the layout component base is sort of capturing the content of each page as a render fragment so that you can render it from your, from your layout. So very exactly the same concept, but here we're using it to capture our, our child content. Okay, so that's cool. So we should now be able to go to our My button and let's actually not make it self-closing. Um, but uh, put some content in here now and add a closing tag. And let's save that. And now it says My Buttons. So we're able to capture the child content and render it inside the, the, the HTML button. That's good. Um, the styling looks a little bit to be desired. Uh, can I add like a, a class attribute right here and like put some bootstrap styling, you know, button, button success, something like that? Let's go ahead and save that. Uh oh, looks like we had an exception. No, object of type. My button does not have a property matching the name class. So this is Blazor being strict about saying that, you know, if you put an attribute on a component, I expect that to be a parameter. And I don't see a parameter named class on your My Button component. So I'm telling you that so you can go and uh, potentially address that. You've maybe mistyped the, the parameter name. But we actually want to take that HTML class attribute and just sort of pass it along to the button that we're actually rendering. How can we do that? Well, we can do that with another parameter. So let's add one more parameter to our My Button component. So parameter. And this one is going to be of type dictionary stringed object. And this is where we're going to just capture any additional attributes uh, that are specified on the My Button component. So get set just like that. Okay, additional attributes. And in order to, to tell Blazor that we want it, this parameter specifically to capture that information, we're going to set this capture unmatched values uh, property to true on the parameter attribute. Okay? So that means now additional attributes should have all the, you know, any extra stuff that, we, that the user decides to put on my button. Now we want to then render these additional attributes on the HTML button. To do that, there's a, a razor directive that lets you do that, which is the at attributes, you know, plural uh, directive attribute. And here we then just uh, pass in the value of our additional attributes, just like that. Okay, and that should then splat the attributes that were captured in that additional attributes dictionary onto the button, so that now we should be able to pass that class uh, along. Let's see if that now works. Let's go ahead and restart. It's, all right, and it's, that doesn't look right. Did I mistype success? I, yeah, I forgot an S. There we go. So now we have a blue button and a green button, and we can set its content. We can pass along additional attributes. We can handle events. Awesome. So we've just seen how in Blazor you can handle arbitrary uh, web UI events from web elements that are in your app. You can also raise events from your own components. You can also pass child content to your components and render it and handle additional attributes that got uh, uh, attributed onto your component instances.